Well, Dr. Ken Kramer is a research scientist and founder of the Space Up Close website. He joins us now from Florida. Dr. Kramer, good to see you. Uh, you were at the launch. How was it? Yeah, it was absolutely spectacular. We've waited for this moment for 50 years since uh, the end of the Apollo program with Apollo 17 astronauts. So, you know, it was um, it was wonderful to be there, electric in the air. It's This SLS rocket is more powerful than Apollo by about 20%. So it was extremely loud and it turned night into day, <laughs> literally. It was so bright it overwhelmed all our cameras, but it, it's got our dreams going back to the moon and that is really important for the future. Well, you mentioned the future. Tell us more about what this means for future space travel, why this is so important. Well, this mission has to succeed. The rocket has to succeed and Orion has to succeed because there's no people on board. There's only three mannequins on board. The next mission, Artemis II, will have four people, three NASA astronauts and one Canadian, but that can only happen if this mission goes perfectly. So the primary objective beyond launching the rocket is to orbit around the moon, but bring the Orion capsule back to Earth. It's gonna hit the Earth at 25,000 miles an hour, and then it'll descend through the atmosphere, slow down on three parachutes, and land safely in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California, and they want to recover that capsule and see how it did. And that is the primary objective, recover this capsule so we can send astronauts next time, in about two years, 2024. Well, you mentioned two years. Uh, you also mentioned 25,000 miles an hour. That's going to be a bit of a bumpy landing. Uh, what's hoped will get out? What is it we hope to get out of the Artemis II mission? Well, it's going to hit the atmosphere at 25,000 miles, but when it actually splashes down in the ocean, it's just a few miles an hour. The parachutes and the atmosphere actually slow it. But it's coming in faster than the space shuttles, which are about 17,000 miles. So what this will do is it will prove that the Orion capsule is safe to send humans on. So that'll set up Artemis II, which will circle around the moon orbit around the moon, fly by. And if that is successful, then we will land people on the moon, the first woman and the first person of color uh, a few years after that, maybe as soon as 2025, maybe a little bit later. So we want to put our astronauts back on the moon, but that can only happen if this mission goes successfully and then sets up the next mission, Artemis II, looping around the moon. So eventually we want to have a base on the moon. So it's a, it's a progression of ever more ambitious missions. And then this eventually will lead to Mars, sending humans to Mars in the 2030s. And just very briefly, what's the point in this? We have bigger problems closer to home that we should be focusing on, no? We have a lot of problems on Earth and we should be solving them, but we have to advance our technology. And if we don't do that, I'm a medical researcher. You just had a story on about medical research. So we need to push the bounds of technology everywhere. We can't just sit here on Earth and not advance. Otherwise, we, we, will, we will cease as a species. So we must move forward both at home and in space, and we must maintain our leadership in space so we maintain our leadership over our adversaries like China, because they're definitely going. Dr. Kramer, so, uh, we'll have to leave you there. Thank you very much for making the time for us. That's all from us for now. Much more on our website. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.